actually 15 minutes is not a lot of time. So, um, and our reviewers had some pretty reasonable questions. So I decided to structure my entire talk around the questions of the reviewers. So uh, first a reviewer was rightly a bit confused and asked, is, is this advancing the research on machine learning algorithms or presenting a case study of deploying a suggestion API service? And the exciting thing is that it's actually both. So we have the task of both uh, doing applied research in order to advance machine learning methods for the automatization of subject indexing and uh, implementing functioning solutions that can be integrated as seamlessly as possible in our other systems and workflows. Um, so what do, we, what do we need for that? How do we make that work? Um, the next reviewer remarked that this is an interesting topic and the challenges in moving from research to production are often underestimated, which is exactly the point I'm trying to make. And uh, another reviewer said that um, others might benefit from the lessons learned when experimenting with automatic indexing systems, especially the barriers of adoption. And I knew that I would have to walk a fine diplomatic line in order to answer that question, but I also think that we need a more honest handling of obstacles and failure in order to advance us all. So here goes. Um, actually, um, ZBW has all, already been experimenting uh, with uh, methods in order to automate uh, subject indexing around the turn of the millennium. Um, there was a publicly funded project uh, called OutIndex, which uh, in hindsight honestly was a more of a feasibility study. Um, and the pro prototype that resulted from this was designed for a system that fell out of use uh, when the two institutions uh, that form the current ZBW were merged um, and also um, colleagues that were around at that time have told me that the methods and all systems involved would have required a lot of additional development in order to make them work together productively. So um, when the current ZBW emerged from this merge um, there was another project and this time they decided to evaluate commercial software solutions um, and they choose, uh, chose uh, this one by a company called Recommind, um, which was also all right, but um, there was the same problem that in the end methods and all systems involved would have required a lot of additional development and resources in order to make them work uh, together productively. And these resources were not available and not invested at the time which was actually good because instead uh, ZBW decided to regroup and to reevaluate their course of action in order to arrive at viable options for practical use. So there was this phase of reorientation and then um, in 2014 there was project Auto Index was uh, launched and it was decided that ZBW would try to do it themselves. Um, and one crucial novelty, I think it's it was really essential that uh, this time they chose to recruit a PhD student, uh, not only in-house, but within the target department, the library, um, that would do um, actual, actual applied uh, research in order to advance uh, machine learning methods for this problem, targeted to the library. And um, the other novelty, which is not a novelty at SWIP, is uh, to use and to produce open source software and not uh, rely on commercial solutions anymore. And the result was actually a prototype uh, based on a fusion approach, so combining several methods. And there were three data releases over time. And I will give you some more details uh, on some of the next slides. And then in 2018, both the PhD student and the coordinator of the project at the time left and um, I took over the coordination and renamed uh, the entire thing Auto SE um, in order to mark a fresh uh, start. So, um, and the lessons I learned in my first year when I tried to, to set up um, future steps for this uh, endeavor was, was uh, first of all, um, that digital transformation is a marathon, not a sprint. So um, I think deciders still think that, yeah, let's do a project and afterwards it, it will work, but it won't. So um, it was really, really important to me to abolish this project 
uh, status. So we had uh, Autos A declared a permanent task, which uh, actually had uh, concrete um, consequences because um, the next lesson that I learned is if you want to, so a research project and um, trans uh, transfer towards production are two different things. So uh, you need uh, uh, extra resources and um, extra um, methods also. So um, the next novelty was not only a um, research person within the target department, but also a software engineer within the target department. So, and we're now entering a two year pilot phase of building and testing the architecture that we need in order to bring our solutions into production based on new hardware, including suitable GPUs and software, notably a range of uh, virtual machines. Um, so, but to recap, what project auto index so our predecessor has um, has done is or has achieved um, was this research-based development of an approach combining several machine learning methods that are already around and some of these you can also find in UNIF by the way and our um, linked open data thesaurus as a lexical base um, and these were also based on short text, so we only took titles and author keywords from the metadata records. Um, and we're only focusing on English right now, but that may change in the future. And uh, the PhD student, understandably, also had uh, some uh, research topics that he tackled, uh, which one of which was concept drift, which, which is an important question to account for uh, the drift between training data and test data. And also um, on the meta level, how can we estimate uh, the quality of the output of our machine uh, generated uh, suggestions so that we can react to them beforehand. Um, and this was all very uh, great, but um, one thing was that the, the PhD student uh, did process the metadata um, as dumps and at irregular intervals. So uh, if one research result was um, had come up, then he tried to test it on uh, a metadata dump and uh, he mainly did it uh, via the command line manually. And also um, the code that he produced was uh, rather for individual research purposes. And if we really would want to transfer this into production, we would um, have to test it much more and also structure it more clearly, which is why when we did reuse some of that code, we had to re-implement it completely. And for other parts, both concerning the methods and the surrounding software structure, we have to find and implement entirely uh, new solutions. So um, concerning the requirements uh, with respect to the infrastructure that we have now uh, for our productive sy system is, well, before we had this applied research and now we have the productive system and we can also divide um, the processes into machine learning processes and in the entire software management system uh, surrounding it. And for production, we also have machine learning processes because we, um, after um, having developed a method, we want to train it one last time and then transfer it into production. And um, in order to ensure a smooth running of the productive system, we uh, need uh, all of this. Uh, mainly, um, the most important thing is to have also testing and uh, monitoring, logging, etc., in order to uh, ensure that it runs smoothly. All the while, uh, research is continuing, and um, as I said, once a research result is reached, it can be transferred into production. So, um, while we were waiting for the final resources that we needed for our system, we um, took the resources that we inherited and uh, established a first basic version where our learning controller is actually not processing dumps anymore, but um, checking every hour if there are new resources in our uh, metadata base. And if there is, then sending it to the suggestion service, which will, where the trained uh, components live, uh, which will then make suggestions of how to subject index this resource. 
and um, then send it back to the database and also store it in order that uh, external uh, systems can um, access this data via an API. And one of these external systems is the so-called uh, DA3, Digital Assistant, uh, which is not a system that we designed, but uh, is a system that is uh, now being evaluated and transferred into production in our library union. Um, it's a, um, a tool that assists in subject indexing by uh, presenting um, intellectual and also machine-generated uh, suggestions for uh, subject indexing. Um, so, another reviewer asked, uh, how will the software architecture enable the addition of new methods without having to interrupt the service itself? So, um, the design aspects and technologies that we will use um, are the following. First of all, we will uh, have a subdivision into microservices, which facilitates the exchange of individual components. Um, we will have container technologies like Docker um, in order to isolate processes and avoid dependency conflicts. Um, and then we already have set up a Kubernetes cluster um, and that's actually one of the ways how to insert new methods without having to interrupt the service. That is uh, gradually inserting new instances of the service, observing if the, they perform well and only removing the old instances if the new ones are behaving properly. The other way would be a dynamic uh, reloading of the new methods without restarting the service. And uh, we're, as a deployment method, we're choosing continuous integration. Um, so we have uh, some systems that we need to integrate our uh, service into. Um, intellectual subject indexing is still running um, via the so-called WinIBW into the union catalog. Um, and from there, there's a mirror is taken, which is then the database for our discovery system. However, um, as I said, uh, the machine learning uh, methods still are just accessing the database that we have in-house. Um, and they can actually be seen in the discovery system, but it's not um, written back into the union catalog. So um, th this path still has to be established. And also, as I mentioned, um, now people are switching for their subject indexing, they are switching from the WinIBW towards this um, digital assistant. And so we wanted to integrate our um, machine generated suggestions into this uh, digital assistant as well. Um, and another reviewer asks just that. So uh, this is not our tool, but we would want to be included as a source uh, into this uh, digital assistant. And we already did that. So this is established and the library union that we are in is actually now um, transferring this um, subject indexing assist, um, assisting tool into production. And um, then the question that maybe everybody asks after the last talk is what's the relationship between your approach and backends and ONIF because it sounds pretty similar. And actually already our, our previous uh, PhD student and the ONIF team um, observed each other and knew what the other one was doing. So um, there was always an exchange of ideas more or less. Um, and ANIF, as you may have noticed, is optimized for accessibility and comparatively easy use, which is great because you can reach a um, bigger and bigger community. Um, and we are also contributing to that, as Osma already mentioned. Um, we'll maybe soon have our lexical backend also available via ANIF. Um, however, um, we do use ANIF as a core framework for the time being, um, but for research and productive purposes, we also have our own code. So sometimes we just use ANIF as a source for code that we modify or as a library, but um, it's maybe not a good idea to, to uh, try to push research grade code into the master branch of ANIF because it would mess with the easy accessibility of ANIF. So, but of course, we would like to stay involved in the development and also the dissemination of ANIF by exchanging ideas and contributing code and also maybe assisting in helping a growing German ANIF user community get started with ANIF. Um, and there's quite a lot of 
exchange and interest around this topic as well. So, and we will also ask if we've already gotten feedback from catalogers, and we have, because the previous PhD student already programmed an interface where, um, where subject indexes could give feedback both on individual subjects and on the entire set of suggestions for a document and also add missing subjects. So we decided to redo such an intellectual review with a reconstructed code base that the PhD student had left us in order to establish a baseline for our own developments from then on forward. And the results were um, that less than a sixth of the suggestions is actually harmful and more than half is actually really help helpful but also that uh, subject indexes had the urge of um, adding descriptors so we knew that we had to work on the specificity of our suggestions so what we're doing right now is um, we're doing another after one year where our research engineer has um, experimented and um, improved a lot of the methods and also uh, experimented with new methods also with uh, some deep learning approaches um, we're doing a review again and we're also using omikuji in two versions and fast text and our own lexical backend combined in an ensemble and um, because our research engineer knows a thing or two about hyper hyperparameter optimization he will do his own experiments using some suitable libraries one of which is unif because it offers a convenient way of doing the necessary format conversions and afterwards um, we also add some filters and mappings so um, we have rules like um, that uh, a set of suggestions must at least contain two descriptors from the core sub thesauri and not just some uh, general terms and also we have a mapping of some um, because our methods still pick out some um, geographical adjectives which should be geographical uh, nouns so we we just um, put a rather trivial mapping on top of that and uh, as in previous years um, we will also do this intellectual review in order to check if we are going into the right direction and um, in parallel, also, uh, Moritz is continuing his research on also uh, neural network uh, approaches and deep learning approaches, including the use of transformers such as BERT and uh, other ones. Actually, uh, this is it. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to answer questions as well. Thank you for that, Anna. Excellent. Uh presentation along with the others. We have two questions just now. Uh, the first is uh, on the slide where you showed the quadrants about the task areas, which, which of those ta task areas is the hardest to do well? <laughs> um, that depends. Actually, that depends on your expertise. <laughs> um, well, I think, um, well, of course, uh, research is um, the most challenging scientifically, but um, if you really want to um, build a system that is really working, you also need to know a lot about um, software management and um, deployment, etc., which is why we're very happy that we also have our own software engineer just for that since uh, February of this year. One final question we have is, how, how do you evaluate the results systematically in the presented workflow? And do you include subject librarians in this process? Yeah, actually, I, I um, showed several slides about this. So we have this yeah. interface um, where, of course, we just present a small subset of our result, results and subject indexes can give feedback. But, but uh, we're also planning, because I know, for example, that the German National Library has a system where they collect feedback from their subject indexes all year round during their day-to-day uh, -day, um, subject indexing process. And we would very much like to, to um, also have a module for doing that in the Digitaler Assistant. Uh, and the company developing the Digitaler Assistant has actually um, or already agreed that they would look into this and uh, include a module that just allows just that and then we can analyze the feedback that we get continuously. Excellent. Thank you very much for those responses.